5.4, integration formulas and the net change theorem. So to begin with, we just have another bit of practice for integration. So evaluate the integral from 1 to 4 of root t times 1 minus t dt. All right, well, let's distribute that first. Integral from 1 to 4 of root t plus t to the 3 over 2. Go ahead and write this as t to the 1 half. Right, Antiderivative there, again with c equal to 0, is going to be t to the 3 halves, and it'll be 2 thirds t to the 3 halves, dividing by the 3 over 2, plus t to the 5 over 2, and that'll be 2 fifths. We'll evaluate that at the end points of 1 and 4. Right, evaluating at 4, we get 2 thirds 4 to the 3 over 2, 2 fifths 4 to the 5 over 2, minus, evaluating at 1, 2 thirds 1 to the 3 halves, plus 2 fifths 1 to the 5 over 2 which will be 256 over 15 if we take the time to evaluate that. Okay, so the net change theorem says that the new value of a changing quantity equals the initial value plus the integral of the rate of change. So cap F of B equals cap F of A plus the integral from A to B of F prime cap F prime of X dx. That is, we have this, which is the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Okay, so now let's apply this. Effectively, what a lot of these are going to be is just applications of that. Given a velocity function, v of t equals 3t minus 5 in meters per second, for a particle in motion from time t equals 0 to time t equals 3, find the net displacement. All right, so the net displacement is simply the change change in s of t is what that is. So the change in s of t is going to be the integral from 0 to 3 of 3t minus 5 dt. All right, so that would be 3t squared. We'll divide by 2 there minus 5t, evaluated at 0 and 3, which is negative 3 over 2 meters. That is my displacement. Now the reason we even need to consider net displacement versus total displacement is because at time 0, at time 0, the velocity is negative 5, meaning it's traveling in reverse for a bit. Okay, so at negative 5, in fact, we're going to be dealing with this in just a second, the same thing, we'll want to find the total distance traveled. So at t of 0, so velocity at time 0 is negative 5. Velocity of 5 thirds is 0. It's not moving, and the velocity at time 3, that end point, is positive 4. So the speed is starting off in the opposite direction, Direction is changed at 5 thirds, and then it's going positively after that. So there's my net displacement. Let's consider the total displacement. Same scenario. I'm going to want to, I want to graph this, sketch it. At time 0, we are at negative 5. As I just said, at 5 thirds, we're 0. And at time 3, the velocity is 4. So the velocity we're trying to find, or the distance really we want, is these two triangles. The total distance is going to be summing those two, rather than subtracting like we did with, with the net. Okay, let's go ahead and work that out. The total distance is equal to 
integral from 0 to 5 thirds of 3t minus 5 dt plus the integral from 5 thirds to 3, 3t minus 5 dt. Now, because we have to add these two as just the quantity, we need to take absolute value bars. Take the absolute value of each of those. Which will not change much of this. So the antiderivative is 3t squared over 2 minus 5t, evaluated from 0 to 5 over 3. And we'll take the absolute value of whatever we get there. Plus 3t squared over 2 minus 5t, evaluated at 5 thirds and 3. And we'll take the absolute value there. Now notice the second one is going to be positive based on our graph. The first one's the one that's going to be negative. All right, now evaluating each of those points, we get the absolute value of negative 25 sixths plus, let's see, that's 9, 19, 19 sixths. So adding those two together, Hold on, that's not right. 19 sixth is not right, I don't think. 2 plus 25 over 6. That is 8 thirds, actually. All right. Okay, so our total is a positive 41 over 6 meters. So again, the way I had to kind of describe the net versus the total is if I walk to my right two feet, but then I go to my left five feet, I've actually gone, or where I end up is negative three. I end up at three feet to my left. However, the total I walked was seven feet, okay, eight feet. I forgot what I said. But the point is there that the total that I walked is the sum of those two distances, the absolute values of those. Whereas the net is a combination. One of those might be subtraction, but that's where, we, that's where it gets us. All right, if the motor on a motorboat st is started at t equals 0, and the boat consumes gasoline at a rate of 5 minus t cubed gallons per hour, how much gasoline is used in the first two hours? All right, what we're going to want to do is take the integral from 0 to 2. Time is 0 going to 2. All right. So this will... Taking the integral of this will give us a gallons amount. Okay, we're going in reverse. Okay, so instead of going from gallons gallons per hour, we're going to back up to gallons by taking the integral. All right, we will take 5t minus t to the fourth over 4, evaluated from 0 to 2. And that will be 10 minus 4, which is 6 gallons. So it will use six gallons in those two hours. All right, next. Top ice boat racers can attain speeds of up to five times their wind speed. The wind speed. Andrew is an intermediate ice boater, though, so he attains speeds equal to only twice the wind speed. Suppose Andrew takes his ice boat out one morning when, when a light five mile per hour breeze has been blowing all morning. As Andrew gets his ice boat set up, though, the wind begins to pick up. During this first half hour of ice boating, the wind speed increases according to the function V of t equals 20t plus 5. For the second half hour of his outing, the wind remains steady at 15 miles per hour. In other words, the wind speed is given by this piecewise function. So recalling that his ice boat travels at twice the wind speed, and assuming he moves in a straight line away from his starting point, how far is Andrew from his starting point after one hour? Well, to find the distance, we want to know how far. To find the distance, we're going to take the integral of velocity, and so we will get, that'll give us a position function. So, let's go ahead and take the integral of V of t, 
from 0 to 1. But wait, he is traveling twice the velocity. This is the velocity of the wind. We want to know his distance, not the winds, how far the wind is, is, is traveled. So we'll go ahead and take that by 2. That is his speed. Now, because we have a piecewise function from 0 to 1 half, we have one function, 20t plus 5. And then 2 times, that'll be from 1 half to 1, and it's traveling at 15 miles per hour. Alright, so let's leave that constant out here. That will be t squared divided by 2, so that'd be 10t squared. It's 5t evaluated from 0 to 1 half, plus 2, times 15t evaluated from 1 half to 1, Okay, and that would end up being 2 times 5 plus 2 times 15 minus 7.5. So 10 plus 15, that is 25 miles. After one hour. That is how far he's traveled after one hour. All right, next example, even and odd functions. For an even function, for any even function, the integral from negative a to a is the same as the integral, twice the integral from 0 to a of that function. For odd functions, if our endpoints are opposites here, negative a to a, that integral is going to be 0. The reason being, let me just draw an even function. There would be an even function. It's symmetric about the about the uh, y-axis. So rather than finding both of these areas, why not just find one and double it? All right. So the integral of f of x dx. Uh, from negative a to a is twice twice the one side. Okay, for an odd function that would be something like this. We have the same area on the left and the right side, except one is negative, one's positive. Because our endpoints are the same and it's symmetric, those two are going to sum out. Yeah, they're going to be 0. So 3x to the 8th minus 2. This one happens to be an even function. So what we can do is take 2 times the integral from 0 to 2, 3x to the 8th minus 2. Alright, All right, that will be x to the 9 over... 9, so that would end up being 1, 3 would cancel out. We get x to the 9th over 3 minus 2x from 0 to 2. Evaluating at 0 does nothing, so evaluating at 2 gets us 500 over 3, which makes our integral equal to 1,000 over 3. Again, even function sort of simplifies our work just a bit. Evaluate the definite integral of the odd function, negative 5 sine x over the interval negative pi to pi. Okay, we are told this is an odd function. We're actually given that fact. But that's a fundamental truth when it comes to trigonometric functions, that sine functions are odd and cosine functions are even. All right, so this is going to be the integral from negative pi to pi negative 5 sine x. Because it's odd and our interval, our upper and lower limits are opposites, this is going to be 0. So our function would look something like this. Okay, from negative pi we're at 0, 
and if pi were at zero, we would have a positive area, a negative area that are equal but opposite. And so the sum is zero. All right, that's an interesting fact to remember. Okay, something that you can work these otherwise, but you can save a little bit of time if you notice that about a function. That brings us to the end of this section on the net change theorem. Again, these are mostly applications, so be aware, especially when you've got um, position functions to velocity to acceleration, that integrating goes in the opposite order. And we always choose c equals zero when we're evaluating to simplify things. That'll be it.